Hey everybody, welcome to this video. So on Facebook, um, there's this phenomenon that's happening where people are listing the 10 most influential albums. So if you're from my generation, um, we used to listen to these uh, vinyl discs called records. And, we, and, and they really impacted us because the best music came from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my, my 10 most influential albums. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you the one of these 10 that holds the, that holds the test of time and is still a great listen. And uh, I love it more today than I did back then. Okay, let's not mess about. <laughs> Number one was actually not a record. When I was 12 years old, I had a little uh, record, a little uh, cassette player, and my first piece of music that I had was called Inagata De Vida by a group called Iron Butterfly. And I would listen to that uh, a lot in my room. I just thought it was the coolest thing. And then a movie came out called Manhunter, which is a fantastic movie by Michael Mann. And at the most, uh, uh, impactful part of the of the movie, the uh, the good cop breaks through this glass to the song Inagata De Vida, and uh, it's fantastic. So that's number one. Okay, then um, I had one birthday where I could get five albums, and one of the albums I got at that time was Long Train Running by the Doobie Brothers. It's got Long Train Running as a song and China Grove, and uh, that really was uh, an awesome uh, album to listen to over and over again. Number three, the classic Led Zeppelin, number four. So that was the first time I heard Stairway to Heaven, and uh, that really changed my life. Um, I have loved Led Zeppelin uh, ever since then, and for their body of work, they are definitely my one true love. Um, I only have one of their albums on this list, but that was the one that was the most influential to me because that was the first one that I bought. It's got Stairway to Heaven, uh, Going to California. It's just got so much good stuff on there. It's, it's ridiculous. Number four, the double album, Frampton Comes Alive. So the first concert I went to was Peter Frampton. Peter Frampton had a day on the green along with Fleetwood Mac and Santana. Can you believe that? I got to sit on the grass at the Oakland Coliseum and throughout the day, watch this amazing uh, concert in front of my eyes. And that was my first concert. Uh, uh, Frampton Comes Alive. Do you feel like we do? Number five is an album called Asia. A-J-A, -A, Asia by Steely Dan. Um, it's the first kind of slower uh, album that I listened to that I really liked. It wasn't like really hard. And um, I, I just loved that album from the moment I heard it. And I still love it today. Number six, uh, now we're getting into my UC Berkeley years and uh, Leonard Skinner started to come into my awareness and uh, one more from the road. This is uh, their double live album. Of course, um, Sweet Home Alabama, classic, and uh, Freebird, Freebird, fantastic. Listen to it over and over and over again. Number seven, Exile on Main Street by the Rolling Stones. Uh, a little more country feel to it. Um, great songs, Tumble and Dice, for example. Um, double album, um, considered a masterpiece by many. Okay, number eight, I was working as a hasher at a sorority, and I was the dishwasher, and a bunch of us really got into Bruce Springsteen. Darkness on the Edge of Town, songs like Candy's Room and Promised Land, fantastic. Number nine, nine, nine. <laughs> Neil Young, everyone knows this is nowhere. This is such a great album, so impactful to me, with a Cowgirl in the Sand and Down by the River. Just the guitar playing alone. It's a fantastic album. And number 10 on my list is Slow Hand by Eric Clapton. Uh, it's best known for the song Cocaine, but um, there's an a song on there called The Core, which can, you can listen to it over and over again. It's just amazing. And also Wonderful Tonight. Wonderful Tonight is such a lovely love song. Okay, now, which one holds the test of time? Really tough for me to choose between Neil Young's, everyone knows this is nowhere, and the Rolling Stones' Exile on Main Street, but I gotta give it to the Rolling Stones' Exile on Main Street. The album is so diverse, 
and there's just so many good songs on that one that I got to say that one, uh, to me, for now, still really, really is a powerful, beautiful um, album that I could listen to over and over again. All right. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this <laughs> walk down memory lane. Um, I do this every single week. If you have not subscribed, I invite you to subscribe. Once a week, I'll send out a uh, short video with whatever is uh, up for me at the time. Um, I try and make it informative and valuable, and I uh, really appreciate you showing up for this one. All right, y'all go out and have a great day. Be safe out there.